take cover. Florida's legislature attacks our citizens. The dark and powerful forces inhabiting Florida's capital have ramped up their attacks on working families, and we have reached code red. Our public education system is in ruins. The voice of democracy stifled by corporate greed from deceptively worded legislation planted to fool the good people of the Sunshine State to brazen assaults on voters. This week, the Florida legislature continued its wrathful strikes against the state of Florida. Florida's local governments have the right, and in many cases, the necessity to enforce laws and safety standards that our state legislature simply will not do. Senate Bill 1336 is a sinister attempt to override local licensing rules, putting consumer and workers' safety into the hands of the state government in a brutal one-size-fits-all program. Uh, I am a licensed electrician. Um, I worked, uh, I have worked very hard uh, for that title, and um, I believe that it means a lot to have it. I believe that when someone hires me to do a job, they are taking into account that I am licensed and that I am able to perform the tasks not only correctly, but safely. Local communities have different needs. The legislature understands this. Unfortunately, they also understand that the shadowy organizations that write their checks hate different standards and safety measures. These local municipalities have these ordinances into place that if a certain project of a certain size or greater, it, they look at that as uh, responsible contractors. And that's just what we're trying to protect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Senate Bill 1336 passed the Community Affairs Committee four to nothing and will continue to the Innovation, Industry, and Technology Committee. Throughout this legislative session, we've seen pandemonium ensue as the state legislature looks to overtake our cities and counties. Their latest target, forcing all of our counties to put term limits on our school board members. Senate Bill 1216 and House Bill 157 continue to rumble through the process with their deceptive numbers and slick packaging to take even more power from our local control and into the hands of the state. Senate Bill 1216 was up first. So the voters of any district can get rid of these people if they want. And we do. Uh, sometimes, in fact most of the time, people don't vote these school board members out precisely because they're doing a good job. <coughs> but most of us know that this bill is not really about term limits at all. It's about the privatization of public education in Florida. Local school boards are among the increasing number of institutions and citizens in Florida and around the country who are resisting the corporate privatization of public education. In this case, by imposing more constricting rules from above on the local authorities who know the most about their public schools. Let's put freedom on the ballot. Let's say we want everybody to be able to choose for themselves and have that vote at the local level so that this term limits uh, that are set or not set reflect the needs of those communities and those voters. Thank you very much for your indulgence, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Senate Bill 1216 passed the Ethics and Elections Committee four to three and will continue to the Senate Education Committee. Later in the week, the House Companion House Bill 157 was heard in the House Education Committee. People from all around the state came in to weigh in, almost all in opposition. Wave in opposition. Waves in opposition. Waves in opposition. Waves in opposition. I'm sorry, waving in opposition. Waves in opposition. Waves in opposition. Waves in opposition. Waves in opposition. This bill will unseat school board members who have the support of their local community. And but for an arbitrary time frame, they are going to be put out. House Bill 157 passed 11 to 4 and will continue on to the House floor. Florida is known as the Sunshine State for a very good reason. While many of us enjoy the warm weather, it can wreak havoc on workers who labor outside, sometimes turning deadly, with heat exposure being the leading cause of weather-related deaths in Florida. Brave citizens, union leaders, and legislators are standing up against this devastating injustice. In a press conference this Wednesday, these leaders called on the state legislature 
to move forward with life-saving laws that would provide these vital protections to the workers that make Florida run. What are you suggesting we do, Mr. Wainwright? Get them with everything you've got now. You need more men, a lot more men. You need tanks and heavy artillery. Thursday, a colossal terror rose from the deep of the Capitol Swamp, once again turning its destructive gaze on citizens' right to have a say in our democracy. House Bill 7037, part of a campaign funded by over $9 million of dark money, seeks to dramatically raise the price of the petition gathering, bog down the approval process by exponentially raising the threshold for consideration by the Supreme Court, and making it so cost prohibitive that only the super rich will be able to change our Constitution. Good morning, Mr. Chair, committee members. My name is Tabitha Burris. I'm a Gold Star wife and a registered Republican. I'm going to speak just on the signature section of this bill and the decrease uh, in the validity of your signature, of our signatures. Uh, 20 years ago, my signature would have been valid for eight years from the time I signed a petition. Now it's valid for two. If this passes, it could be valid for a matter of days. And then what happens if I sign it three days before the February 1st? Well, do I get to sign it again? or? Is my signature no, val no longer valid? Restricting this will really restrict the rights of our citizens and the ability for our citizens to speak for themselves. And this is an, this is an important part of our process for the citizens to be able to directly do things in a grassroots initiative. Thank you so much for your time. We oppose this proposal because we believe voters uh, and the right to participate in direct democracy is a sacred right and non-negotiable. Back in 2004, after the passage of the minimum wage amendment, amending the citizens initiative process became the number one priority of the Florida Chamber of Commerce. From 2004 to 2008, not, not uh, dozens of bills, hundreds of bills were filed looking at making it harder to amend the Constitution. In that time frame, we reduced the lifespan of signatures from eight years to four years to two years. In that time frame, we shortened the campaign time that groups had to make it to the ballot. In that time frame, we raised the threshold to pass an amendment to the Constitution to 60%, 60% chipping away, chipping away. In that time frame, we, we mandated that signatures be submitted within 30 days. In that time frame, we prohibited signature gatherers from uh, operating in public, private spaces. In that time frame, we allowed, we took the first step at allowing the legislature to put their finger on the scale with uh, fiscal impact statements. Chipping, chipping, chipping. Then things got relatively quiet until another minimum wage amendment made it to the ballot. And last year, we had the legislation that was considered in this body and passed that made substantive changes that I'm sure you're aware of, and now we have this bill. So for years, we've been chipping and chipping and chipping and chipping, and you may not be aware of that because you weren't here. But this is not the first step. This is the last step to eliminating the Citizens Initiative as we know it. This has been a long, ongoing process. The bill that you're considering right now can't be viewed in a vacuum. It can't be viewed by itself. You have to compare it to all of the different things that the citizens have already lost in this process. So because of how this fits in to that bigger narrative, to that bigger story, uh, we really uh, urge you to vote no on this legislation. We passed a bill like this last year to much opposition, as you know. Um, let's see how that goes. If it cures the ills that you were so concerned about last year, let's see if it works before we do it again. House Bill 7037 is one of those titanic terrors facing Florida's democratic process. We'll keep you up to date as this behemoth of suppression continues its way through our legislature. It passed the State Affairs Committee 15 to 7. College presidents and provosts control billions of tax dollars, tens of thousands of employees, and shape the futures of even more of our students. Floridians have a right to know the candidates for these positions of power. That's why SAC4 poses such a huge threat to the people of Florida. SAC4 would hide candidates for president from the press and the public, shrouding the process and opening the choices up for cronyism and nefarious motives. I've seen this bill now for the last six years. 
it's a bad idea then, it's a bad idea now. Uh, we have the best university and college system in America. I think most of you recognize that, and that's an important thing. So what's wrong with the leadership we have? What's wrong with President Thrasher? What's wrong with President Carell at USF? What's wrong with the other presidents of the other universities? They applied in the open. They were not afraid. They didn't ask or seek secrecy. Chairman Laval, I respectfully disagree. Secrecy is bad for this state. I'm an electrician from Gainesville. Uh, most of what you've heard has been from kind of academics, but to bring a different perspective to it, Gainesville is kind of a company town, and that company is UF. Um, the, when we talk about the, the search for a president for, for UF or for Santa Fe, you're talking about the head of the largest employers in our area, um, people that are, are over a quarter of our population as students there. It has a huge impact on my community and being able to be part of the discussion um, to, to be for that to be out in the open so that we can weigh in on that is something that my community takes very seriously. When there's a new president coming to UF or to Santa Fe, it's big news. It's something everybody's involved in. And to take that away from us, I think would be very damaging for her. SAC 4 passed the House State Affairs Committee 16 to 4 and will now be filed as House Bill 7081. It's monstrous, dude. Monstrous. It grows bigger and bigger. As this odiferous offense against the people of Florida continues, stalwart defenders of our citizens are coming from across the state to fight back against the creeping horror coming from our capital. Working Families Lobby Corps stands up for our state against the millions of big money lobbyists. They're fighting for us. Will you answer the call? My name is Kayla Colmus and I'm here with IBW Local 1205 and I'm here to learn about the legislative process and uh, yeah, just help out a great organization do the good work. Hi, my name is Lisa Spencer Novak. I'm here with United School Employees of Pasco County. This is my third year in Florida. I formerly taught in Ohio, and I decided when I got here, um, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. So I want to see Florida be a great state for education. Thank you. Hi, my name is Maurice Johnson. I'm here representing the FPO, which is the Federation of Public Employees of Broward County, to let them know that there is someone here in Tallahassee fighting for their rights. Solidarity! That wraps up this week's Florida AFL-CIO legislative update. Tune in next week as we continue our coverage of this Leviathan legislature.